listen, old friend. Come in, you receive me. You don't hear me. Listen you don't me. hear me. Come Get me out, you receive old fellow. Oh, God, you can't hear Some me. You don't hear me. Come me. in. The radio's dead. Hey, don't you see? The radio's me. dead. Don't you see what's happened? I told you, I told you, and nobody listened. Nobody listened. January 17, Base Research Station, Ryan Horner, Project Director. Today is our fifth day without radio contact with Dr. Vogel. Previous attempts to reach Summit Laboratory have failed because of continuing snowstorms. I fear for Vogel's well-being. Before we lost transmission, his radio contacts were becoming increasingly sporadic and irrational, to the point that he reported having conversations with such figures as Napoleon and Alexander the Great. I'm deeply concerned that he may not be feeding the monkeys and chimps, nor recording the results of our altitude experiments on them. If this is the case, the four years of research for the space program will have been wasted. Our promised delivery date is less than three months away, and we must salvage the project. Doctors Robert Jones and Frank Inari arrived from the university this morning to relieve Vogel and continue the experiments. I am much relieved that this particular team was made available to finish the project, as it was their research in stress situations man might encounter in space exploration that is the basis of our program. The storm has calmed enough for Val Adams to fly them in along with a new chimp for experiment control. I must confess my deep concern as to what they will find.
Fogel. to death with the heat. The keys. the keys, the keys, where are the keys?
they run an open channel. You want all this? Where'd you find him? In the electronics room. Looks like a heart attack to me. He must have assumed he was locked in. He wasn't. He had his keys. The door was open. But he'd opened the storm window. God knows he knew better than that. I suppose to try and get out. Let let the snow and the cold in. I guess he must have got a hit when he tried to close it. Coffee? That's all. Yeah, I got Thanks. We were just sitting there, frozen at the tape recorder, holding on to the microphone. He ran off about 300 feet of tape. I might tell you what he was thinking at the time. Look, I got about 15 minutes to get out of here. It's starting to come in pretty good. Thanks. Let me talk to Anari. Anari? How are the monkeys? Oh, uh... I haven't checked them. I, they're all right, I guess. But there's no sign of starvation or dehydration. They're just cold. You got a lucky break when the generator stayed on. There's a thousand watts of light in here, and that provided some of the heat. What about Geronimo? Now, he's just coming out of his drunk. I'd like that tape recorder. No. We need the recorder. We need the recorder. We transcribe all our work. Can you remove the tape? Send it out with Val. Not if he wants to hear what's on it. It was 20 below in there. It'll shatter. It was 20 below. The tape will shatter. Do it right then, okay? Let me know when it thaws. Val. You? Give them what orientation you can, then get out of there. Sum it up. Base out. You know about this radio? Okay, you got volume control, transmission key, power. No, it's okay, I know this one. Okay, generator, water storage tanks, hot water tank, water making vat. You gotta make your own water. You shovel snow through that flap into this vat. Now the hot water circulates through this tank, comes out that nozzle, melts the snow. Now, it takes a lot, so you gotta shovel plenty. Now, you open this valve, and it's stored in the tanks. Master keys are in the shop. So are the manuals, if you have any questions. this? You believe any part of this? I'll finish cleaning up the place. It's like, I don't know what it's like. It's not so bad. It's not so bad, you hermit. You'd like it if it was a hole in the ground. You've got one this time, too. Oh, well, you got pots, pans, all the utensils. Food supplies are good. The stocks are ample. Well, we can get into this mess anyway. They told us to get into it. No. You answered the phone. You answer the phone too much, Frank. It's a terrible habit.
give it two stars. As opposed to what? What do you take, Robert? What do I take what? Duty roster. Duty roster? Now we've got to keep the place clean. Somebody's got to make up the beds, clean out the monkey cages, make the water, fill the, the tanks with... I cannot make the shot while you're talking. But I will... make the water. You make the water, you take the water, and the butane. Uh, who cooks? In the interest of mercy, you cook. Right, I cook. And who cleans? Well, that's always the guy who cooks. All right, I cook and I clean. Robert, do you... Robert, do you mind if we talk a little business? Go ahead. Well, let's, let's take Geronimo. I'd, I'd like to let him out of his cage. Let him run loose for a while. And I'd like to see how he adapts to being released from confinement. Okay. Look, Robert. I like it here, Robert. I like the work. I like the analysis. You like to explore the unknown. I don't. I don't like going around in the corners and the places I can't see. You do. Look, you like clues and all they add up to. That's what's been eating you, Robert. You've got no mystery to solve. They've taken all the pleasure out of it for you. They've done your job, but not mine. Work with me, Robert. Insanity didn't get Vogel. He died of boredom. I'm dropping the temperature on a specified time course, one degree every 12 minutes. Hey, take a look. Are you all right? Yes. Yeah, that's the altitude. Every shovel full of snow you think's gonna be your last. Well, take some oxygen. Yeah? No, I'm sorry. It looks comfortable enough. Yeah, I've scanned them pretty thoroughly. No excitability. And uresis? And cupresis? No. 
You've got a very nice, adaptable client. Base to Summit. Come in, Summit. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you. Yeah, okay, bar's open. Five o'clock. The new tests you ran on the monkeys are really interesting. Okay. Have you reached any conclusions? Well, we still don't know the range of their tolerance. What's your projection? Frank is taking one of the little nitwits down to 15 degrees, now a degree at a time. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> you don't sound like you're making any new friends. Yeah. They're not too friendly. Are you still using the tape recorder? Yeah, tape's on everything. The equipment's working okay? What, the recorder? Yes. I don't know why Vogel's tapes came out blank. I just can't understand it. Any development with Geronimo? He takes food and water as offered. As a control, he wasn't necessary, but you know that. Uh, he's not telling us anything new. We got the autopsy on Vogel, by the way. It came in this morning. A little surprise. No heart attack. Hello, Summit? Base to Summit. No heart attack? Blood enzymes and arteries clear, lungs clear, no vascular disorder, no clots or obstructions. What's the rest of it, injuries? No broken capillaries, bones or veins, no internal bleeding. It's a clean pathology. I'm afraid that window got him. He froze to death. I eat too much. I'm going to cut down. Well, it's not that there's any physical harm to it. It's a psychological fact that it's too easy to gratify. I'll probably cut down. It doesn't scan, Frank. Oh, well, you know, nothing ever does, does it? It doesn't scan. What's the trouble, Robert? Ever seen anybody frozen to death? There's a peacefulness that comes over the features, all the muscles in the face relax. It's just like going to sleep. I'm not very good at reading between the lines, I'm afraid. Well, Vogel looked like he was about to be bludgeoned to death or something. What are you talking about? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know what I mean. Listen, you can't ascribe an attitude to a dead man just because of what you think is on his face. Highly unprofessional. That's right. But just suppose for a minute, assume with me, he was in physical fear. You can't make an assumption like that. Well, you bought Adam's assumptions. Of course. Vogel was in the room, thought he was locked in the room. 
when he had the keys in his pocket, that he would open the window knowing it was going to freeze him to death. That's logical? There's nothing illogical about it. He was psychotic. You said so yourself. You saw the place. He tore it apart. Now just suppose with me for a moment. Why did he go to that room? It's the only one with a lock on the door. He could lock himself in. But the door wasn't locked. He was going to open the window knowing that it would kill him? Why? He ran off 300 feet of tape while he was freezing to death. And it's blank. Well, there's nothing contradictory about that. Vogel just forgot to turn on the recording device on the tape recorder. That's why we didn't get his voice. Well, that doesn't explain the window or the door. I don't think we've got it. It doesn't add up. I don't think we know how Vogel died. I, I don't buy that, Robert. It doesn't add up. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. There's a mistake in the thinking somewhere. It's small. It's something. I, I don't know. It'll turn up. I'll work it out in the shower.
Get the generator. I can't get it started. Never 
touch the heat last night. I'm not accusing you. It was an honest error. I did not touch the heat, and I never went near the generator. I saw you, Robert. You went downstairs. If you were awake, then you heard the monkeys raising hell down there. No, I didn't. Well, I did. And when I came down, there was one light on in the electronics room. Did you use the medical analyzer last night? I haven't touched the medical analyzer since we got here. Well, it was turned on. And the window was open in the room. Snow was coming in from the outside and melting on the floor. When I went over to close the window, the door began to swing shut on me. You open the window, the draft is the door. I'm going to open that window at 2 o'clock in the morning when the temperature is 20 below. You don't see the pattern. I don't see the pattern. What pattern? To what happened to Vogel. Robert, you're so turned on about this thing, you can't think of anything better to do with yourself. It could cost you your life messing around like that. Base station to Summit Laboratory. Come in, Summit. February 14th. Evening radio transmission with base confirmed snowstorm. Third in two weeks. Food deprivation tests start at a.m. Subject monkeys, Freddie and Richie, placed on quarter rations of food and water. Symbiotic relationships disrupted by mid-p.m. Mutual hostility accompanied by anger and aggression. Continuing dependency behavior of Geronimo since a.m. fright. Exactly running the table. Frank, I'd like to talk to you. All right. <clears throat> Everything you said about me is true. I don't like this kind of work. I, I bloody hate it. It bores me and I get depressed. But I'm a professional, Frank. I don't play games. Robert, those were careless. I know you. You can't stand up. Mystery here. Anything that can't be immediately explained. But I don't understand why you continue to worry. Because you know I didn't go near that heat last night. I wouldn't touch the generator and I never would have opened that window. Who did? Vogel found himself somehow in that room. I found myself in the room. The window was open on Vogel, the window was open on me. The door closed on Vogel, and it was closing on me. Now, Robert, I've been very patient with you. When we got here, the heat was turned off. This morning, we woke up, and the heat was turned off. Deranged perception, delusions. You're running 140 degrees. But there's something here, Frank. Vogel knew it. Listen to you. Excessive, unreasonable accusation. Conditions as you want them to be. What, what is, is it that's are? being uncovered here, Frank, that doesn't want to be uncovered? Robert, I don't want to discuss this with you. Not for another instance, you understand? That's fine. This is very interesting, Robert. The action factor of the monkeys doesn't always add up. I mean, there are certain inconsistencies. You know the way bacteria develop immunity to certain antibiotics? Well, these animals seem to have developed an immunity to stress. They appear to stress, but I'm not so sure. Robert! 
Are you going to drop this and come to your senses? Coyotes survive at this altitude. Pronghorn sheep and certain rodents. Eight orders of insects and three species of birds. That's all. This place is not being bombarded by the barometric phenomenon of cosmic forces. There's nothing unnatural here or supernatural. There's just you and me. You really believe that? That nothing peculiar happened to Vogel? Oh, Robert. You don't share my conviction? You don't share my concern? You haven't for a minute, as long as we've been here. I want to hear you say it, Frank. Robert, I don't know what the hell is going through your head. It's the altitude. You're ludicrous. I mean, take a look around you. If there was much something wrong, I'm not an idiot. I'd go over it with you from stem to stern. I'd tell you. All right. Now, these are the laboratory workups I did. Before and after. This is a food deprivation workup. Repeat procedure. Enzymes. Protein. Urine. Where's the blood analysis? Uh, I'm coming to that. I'm, I'm going to run a count in the lab. Well, that'll take days. Well, I've left room for it. I'll fill in the results. Well, why waste time with counts? Why don't you use the medical analyzer? It'll run the whole assay in 15 minutes. I'm trying to collate the human constitution with behavior. Why don't I'm you not... use the analyzer, Frank? You haven't, have you? Not since we've been here. Because it's in a room where Vogel died. You haven't set foot in that room since the day we found him, have you? Why? What could there possibly be about that room that would bother you? You don't share my conviction. You don't share my concern. You'd tell me if you did. But you have told me, my friend. machine off, Robert. All right. You can put him back in his cage. Put him back in the laboratory. It's all right. Maybe we analyzed all wrong. You take this animal, for example. Compare him with what we did. For example, we demonstrate the fear hypothesis. The fear stimuli produces radical physiological changes. Rage, hyperventilation, accelerated pressure, and pulse. Extreme fear abolishes or interferes with a normal pain reaction. Maybe what we had yesterday was not a normal adaptation at all. <laughs> Maybe what we have here is hypoesthesia, reduced sensitivity to tactile stimuli, producing a partial tonic immobility. You don't like that, Robert, do you? Look at your face. Maybe now you understand how it feels. Hypoesthesia, hypersensitivity. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about, Robert, and no bull. You're experimenting with me. It's not the monkeys you're working, it's the monkeys and Anari. Every time I turn around, the light's left on, the window is open, the door ajar, heat. I understand. No, no, I understand. Maybe that, that's the way you go about doing things. Maybe that's the way you like an experiment set up. But it's me you're experimenting with. Now, why don't you be honest? Come out and tell me so. I'll, I'll accept it. 
I want to find out what's going on here, and I want to find out tonight. Okay, Frank. All right. Uh, let's get a good night's sleep first. Huh? Let's both get a good night's sleep, and we'll uh, thrash it out over breakfast in the morning. Oh, that, that's terrific. That's terrific, Frank. That's terrific. up here. We're running a hustle. A scientist discovers abominable snowman in high altitude research center. That's the car, isn't it? You fraud, you fake. You genius has never arrived. You're not a man to be trusted. You never have been. Selfish, no morals. If you think you're going to buy yourself some kind of immortality with this, why is it you've never done great things in the world, Robert? What's the matter? What's wrong? It isn't for want of ambition, feeding off other people's talents. That's why you've had it in for me. I've been your meal ticket. No more. No more. We're through. I'm a scientist, at least. Who He probably got angry with me because I wouldn't... It... Rub it?
take a shower now, if you like. I don't need a shower. I, I... Well, on the other hand, if you don't care for a shower, don't take one. Don't use a tin cup, Robert. It'll burn your mouth. Here, you use the plastic one. And dinner will be ready in about half an hour. I managed to save most of the food. He really shredded it. You have to go out again? Once more. Well, you've been in and out all day. That's true. Then you do it. Oh, Robert, I didn't mean... It's 20 below out there. You can't take more than 15 minutes at a time. Yeah, I understand you're right. Look, I, I want to talk to you. Okay, talk. Robert, I'm sorry. Well, forget it. No, no, right? let me say it. Let me say it. I, I got hot and frightened. All those things you were bringing up. It's interesting, it was logical, but, but it got me going there for a while. I must admit, I, I thought you really had something there, but damn it, Robert, put yourself in my position now. I'm a scientist. I like things in their proper order. I, it bothered me. I could see that you had a point when I thought about it, but it's hard to go from A to B to C. I don't know. And there's that Volvo business. Maybe Adams was right. No, but that doesn't explain the window and the door, Robert. And there must be something there. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it, Robert. We'll find it. I know, we'll find it, Robert. It's got something to do with the names. Names? What names? You were there. We were both there. We both heard it the same time. Something to do with the monkeys' names. I don't understand what you mean. What names? Will you uh, turn the water off down there? Are you okay, Robert? Are you really okay? Just take your shower.
Julie? Napoleon! Julius Caesar, they're only meant to conquer us.
this, Robin, unless... I'm going to ask you simply, Robert, I want you to go into the electronics room. Okay. I'm going to lock you in there, and I'm going to radio Horner. I couldn't have done this, you damn fool. All right, I'll, I'll go and bring down your bedding, Robert. I didn't. You're not feeling well. Lock? Myself out. All right. I want you to come along, Robert. Please. Who did? Please. You? Him? For once in your life, face it. Face it. We took food away from the monkeys. The food is taken away from us. It's no good, Robert. No good. No good. Subject the monkeys to fear. And we're subjected to fear. Oh! You did it. You did it. Put them in isolation and we become isolated. You've done all the damage you're going to do. Subject them to cold and we're subjected to cold. I'm not going to let you walk over here anymore. I'm going to spell it. Everything that has happened here to us happened before. No, you're, you're going, going out of your mind, Robert. You're going out of your mind. Look at you. you. You're becoming Vogel. Being made to become like him. Oh, dear God, no. Vogel told us the truth. He told us, and nobody... Listen. He told Horner I had conversations with Alexander the Great. What are their names? Julie, Nappy, Alan, Alexander the Great. Everything that we have done to them, they have managed to do to us. Pray, don't you get it? No, please. No, it's the monkey. <laughs> Maybe that's the way you like an experiment set up. But it's me you're experimenting with. 